Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is CEO and founder of Watch Mojo, Ash Can Carbus Fruchan, to discuss success in sports. Okay, welcome. You used to write for TechCrunch, you used to do some uh, articles there, and around the time that Facebook went public, you published Mark Zuckerberg's Six Criteria for Success as an Entrepreneur in Business. So what were those? Ambition, vision, execution, persistence, luck, and timing, and when you know what the hell you should focus on, focus. Yes. So eventually I added a seven. Okay. So obviously we're from Montreal, so hockey is everything, and we can't not talk hockey. So we were talking about Carey Price, the goalie for the Montreal Canadiens, becoming the most, the winningest goalie in the history of the team. Still no Stanley Cup, but it's okay. We're not ungrateful. Anyway, uh, and you listed a number of trades for him, um, so I will name them, and you... I'm not sure um, if it's so much for him, although it can apply. I was trying for yours to be like, I want to do one similarly for entertainers and then also athletes, and I think I kind of came one with athletes that might make sense. I know, sense. but really, they apply to everything. That's the thing. True. So, and in true Watch Mojo form, there are 10, so... That's a coincidence. Uh -huh. Well, it's great. I will name them, and you expand. So... Number 10 is opportunity. So you hear that like hockey is an expensive sport, right? Like I'm a pretty decent soccer player, but like Canada soccer is not, you know, popular. We call it soccer. So There you go, that's <laughs> it. And, and I also think opportunity then, I always kind of draw parallels between macro, big picture, and then specifically within a game. And then opportunity is also creating an opportunity in a game and then having the instincts, being aware of where the puck is or where the ball's gonna go. So opportunity to me is big picture or specifically in a game, you know, you need to be aware, basically. Right. All right. And you need to create, you need to pursue that opportunity. Yeah, and make your own opportunity. There you go. Yeah. Number nine, you have skill. So skill is a bit of a duh, and I want to expand on this. Like, I feel like skill, everybody's like, how come that is number one? Like, bullshit should be number one. Let me explain. I think if you're going to be like a pitcher, Greg Maddox. Yeah, but skill shouldn't be number one. Sorry to interrupt. Okay, no, like, good. Yeah, okay. No, it's, it shouldn't because skill, like, it's an innate thing. Like, it should be something you can work at and get better at. You should be sitting here. Exactly. But skill, it, there's that's one. There's many layers here. The other one is I feel like if you are that top elite player, like the, the marquee player, the talisman, then skill is probably you have so much of it that so long as you're not a, a crazy junkie who doesn't show up to practice, tells off the coach, you'll make the team. Now, whether or not then you become the top guy, you got to do the rest of the stuff. But I actually realize that when you look, when you break down a team, you got the character players, you got this and that. That it's it's actually a lot about, you know, you, you won't have the most skilled player maybe be like the third and fourth and fifth and sixth defenseman, but sure, your top guy could be the most skilled player on the ice that day. So skill's important, but the, the whole point of this list is to go, if you're wondering as a young you know, prodigy, or if you were just a fan of sports and you're figuring, why did a draft Ryan Leaf? Why did a guy who could throw the ball probably across the field not make it? It's because skill's actually not at the, you know, at the top of the list, so to speak. Yeah. And just because you're on the fourth line doesn't mean you're a bad player. No, I'm never, I never said that. No, I know. Never I'm, said I, that, I, yeah. anyway. Uh, number eight, and I'm glad it's only at number eight, is sacrifice. So sacrifice, again, many things as simple as sacrificing to sleep to wake up early to go to practice. Sacrifice is also the quintessential teammate thing where like you got to be okay to sometimes sit on the bench, passing the ball, letting somebody else, you know, uh, shine. Diving in front of that puck. Diving, yeah, hey, big time. Like these are very symbolic terms, right? So commitment. And, and I think ultimately it's the opportunity cost. So we talk about opportunity. This is more like, what are you willing to forego to win the big prize to be on that you know, winning team? So you got focus at number seven, which I think is low, frankly, but cool. I mean, it's, you could move some of these around. Yeah. So focus again, I feel at the big, uh, is, is recognizing what sport you should focus on. You hear this a lot about in the States where like a player is a stud, at football and basketball, and he's got to make a pick. And sometimes you make that pick thinking, football, I may get, uh, you know, like a concussion and be out. Baseball, hey, I could probably never get injured, so I'm going to go for baseball. Um, and, they have and then huge ultimately, huge contracts. Sorry? They have huge contracts. Huge contracts help as well. Um, and then two is actually focused during a game. I think that's also, mm -hmm. uh, what I've seen is when I play amateur friendlies largely, but when I play soccer slash football, I'm always telling um, the team like to finish, to focus on each play and finish their play. Because I go, if you don't finish your play, and I'm assuming you will, 
if you're giving up the ball, I'm not getting the ball. Now we're two that are exposed in bad position. So you got to finish the play. You got to focus on that play. Stop thinking about like, oh, I want to be a draft pick. I want the salaries. You are so far away from salaries and draft picks. You got to just take it play by play. You got to focus on that. And that also means focus on where your teammates, focus on where the opponent's going to be. Uh, could be higher, but seven, it's on the list. It's on the top yeah. 10. Uh, number six is preparation slash practice. Yeah, I mean, I'm channeling Alan Iverson here. It was like, practice. It's just <laughs> practice. But, uh, you know, when I no, think... No, you're not. You're opposite. He thinks it's not important. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm thinking of him, not channeling. Yeah. No, exactly. I'm just seeing him at that uh, inter in the interview saying it's just practice. So if you want a good uh, reason why I probably never pursued, uh, despite having some skill, was I never had that interest, desire, capacity to say, I'm going to commit to this and do the practice and prep and prepare, which is ironic because as, as I got older, I craved that coaching. You know, whenever, even when it's weird, whenever I play or when it's friendlies with refs, I'll go to them discreetly and I'll ask them, I'm like, hey, you called that, why? What did you do? Or I'll go up to players who I see have you been coached. You must be popular. <laughs> well, no, but it's just because then I don't make the same mistake, yeah, no. right? So, so long story short, I feel like ultimately, you know, I placed it at, where did I place it? I placed it at six. I think at one point this was number two, but then I said, that's insane. I feel like, and, and you'll see why it's not number two when you know what number two is, but I feel that's actually where like 80 or 90% of athletes who make it to the pros, I feel it boils down to uh, number six. Number five is luck. So luck is in many ways, and it's interrelated to a few of the others. Luck is not just a lucky bounce that you get, Bill Buckner, or don't get. Luck is also sometimes could be simply on the play avoiding injury. That's definitely one. Luck is sometimes, you know, if you are not drafted in a given year because uh, you're not eligible uh, or you're young, and then you go the next year, that could be the difference between going on a good team or a bad team or being the number one draft pick overall. Just getting being in a huge the right place at the right time. Being at the right place yeah. at the right time. So luck, I put it in the business one, and obviously it's life and everything. So whether you're talking big picture or during a game, I would take luck. And actually, whatever... I'm a striker, I play the striker position, so I score a lot of goals, and I'm always like, luck, 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 whenever I score. I'm always like, oh, I'll take the lucky ones. I feel like, you know, whenever I see people that are like, um, you know, you know, they have a lot of obstacles in their life, they're always very much believers in God, because it's very easy to blame God and say, that's why my life sucks. I know it sounds a bit harsh, it's like, it's God's will, there's, there, this will make, I would have thought opposite. Well, if you look at the, the tranches of society that are down on their luck, they tend to be extremely religious. Like, there's a greater meaning. Otherwise, life is just unfair and it sucks. I don't want to touch this but, but anyway, we don't have to go there. That's another show. But so I feel like, and it's also when you are, it's true, though, that when you're extremely fortunate, it's easy to sit there and go, I want to thank God for giving me this great voice, for giving me this great talent. You know, I'm so much better than everybody else because of God. But you're basically saying I'm just better than everybody else. So that it works both ways. But I feel like when you when you do have success, it's it's also easy to say, hey, I'm just lucky, because uh, it's a lot more tasteful to say I'm lucky than I'm good. So that's why luck yeah. is a, is a big one. Well, we kind of touched on this, but number four is timing. Yeah. So timing, this one is more so than um, than the. I mean, look, I think it touches luck and timing are are sisters in in this list. Timing. Um, is the one thing that you see time and time again, no pun intended, when also players get injury. So some of it is get injured. Some of it is just luck, like the ball bounces differently. Yeah. But I feel like timing is the one thing that if you could anticipate football, football, American football. American football is so quick at the NFL level and whenever you see like the CFL, NFL comparison, it's not just the three downs or the size of the ball. It's the timing. Whenever you talk about a college athlete, will he succeed in the NFL, they're talking about timing. You're standing there, everybody is an elite. Whenever you hear John Madden say, this guy's the greatest at his position, you're like, what is he talking about? It's because they all are great at their position. They get replaced really quickly. So I think timing is that ability to anticipate where the play is going to go. You know, Wayne Gretzky skates to where the puck is, not where it's been. And I feel like so often when you, the difference between winning and losing is just how you could connect on those passes and anticipate where a player is going to be. Number three is discipline. Yes. So number three, obviously very high. Discipline is many things. Proactively, it's, you know, eating well, exercise. Nowadays, 
especially hockey players, if you're lucky and good, you make it all the way to the Stanley Cup. Your season ends when? June? Uh, and then, pra you know, practice uh, is when? August? Spring training? Not spring training, the equivalent mm -hmm. there. Uh, like August, training camp. September. Yeah. August, September. Okay. Yeah. But I'm just saying, back in the day, you were drinking and smoking in between. And yeah, during, they weren't making any money either. They weren't making any money, so it's very different. So now, and partly because it's, it's bigger stakes, I'm just saying that, like, discipline is clean. But dis discipline works in many other ways. One is, if you're Ryan Leaf, again, I'm going back to him, you need discipline not to tell a journalist to go F off. If you are disciplined, you, you don't drink, you don't do drugs nowadays, you don't smoke. So I feel like if you, if you talk of um, Tom Brady, the reason why at 41 he's winning Super Bowls and crushing it. I feel it, like that's a bad example. Why? Well, the scandals. You can deflate some balls or whatever. No, but that's, I wouldn't think. If you, if you really write off all of Tom Brady's success and say I it's... I don't. Like, I mean, Tom Brady is an example. Is this list basically, in a nutshell... I know, but you can also... He's uh, not the most skilled. Not he's to, got not skill. Not to poke yeah. holes or deflate your argument, haha. -ha. But, like, Tiger Woods isn't exactly, or wasn't exactly the most good. Uh, and he lost his wife because yeah, of the know, lack but, of discipline. And, and his... Okay, then it is yeah. a good example. No, because, it's a great example. That's yeah. my point. But, I mean, think of the number of players... So I was uh, in the car, I got in, and it was a rare time that I was alone. If I'm with my wife and daughters, they're listening to like, you know, pop on Sirius. But they weren't on, so instead of blasting techno or hard rock music or rap, I was like, let me listen to sports radio. And there was an interview, it was Chris Nyland, but I didn't know who he was interviewing. And this other, the interviewee was talking about how it's very easy to blame others and it's very easy to blame the coach. And he's like, I kept falling back and drinking and doing drugs and you get injured and drugs help. And he's like, you don't, you're not on the top line, you turn to the bottle. And I was listening, um, you know, as someone who in, in, in my third book talk about how like creativity and substances and ambition and addiction and all those things are like two sides mm -hmm. of the same coin. You know, like I, I've always said it, like I understand why like people do like abuse substances. I get it. I understand why creative people lose their minds. It's very obvious to me. So in any case, this guy was talking about it and ultimately, I'm not blaming him, but it was, um, it was Devin Setaguchi, mm. former Sharks player. But the point was, there is instinctively this thing where it's a lack of discipline. You know, like I purpose, I personally could drink 20 beers. Uh, I probably have at one point in my, you know, and it's like you got to have the discipline to say no. And you got to have the discipline to say, I'm going to wake up and go to the gym. And you have to have the discipline not to tell off your teammates. You know, last night in our amateur game, I'm 41. We're playing one game. It was 19. They beat us. I wanted, you know, we all were, were losing. Um, and, and we all could have turned around and told one another off. You need to have discipline not to tell off your teammates, right? So discipline manifests itself so much from taking care of yourself proactively to avoiding the, the temptations and sins and all that, uh, that I think it's three, but discipline could be... I mean, look, there was a Canadian player. Was it Perez Jogan a few years ago? He was a prospect. We drafted him. In the middle of a game, in the AHL, I think, he was on, on his feet, like the other player kind of like shoved them, he grabbed a stick and kind of like just slashed the other player across the, 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 the chest. And then I thought, I think he got a lifetime suspension or something pretty big. So my point, I'm pretty sure it was Perez Rogan. Okay. I'll check I don't if remember I'm wrong. That, but no, I'm... but this was like 10, I'm aging. This was 10. No, I mean, I remember Perez Rogan, yeah. but I don't remember. So, so, um, so he was just, I mean, I'll check. I hope it's him. Otherwise, I just like yeah. defame <laughs> somebody. But, but basically, boom, gone. You can have all the talent in the world. Nobody wants that. So to me, discipline is, is in business and in, in, in entertainment. But in entertainment, now a bit less so. In entertainment, if you trash your hotel room, if you do drugs, it's, it's unfortunately, it's part of central casting. Sports, no more. Number two is coachability and teamwork. This one I think is huge, yeah. um, and hence why it's number two. I think that as an entrepreneur early on in my career and when I was in school, uh, in academia, and when I would do sports, I had this reputation for not being coachable. I had this reputation for being, I don't want to say like a loose cannon, unhinged you? or anything like that. <laughs> but I had this reputation because I, I wore my ambition on my sleeve. I was extremely driven. Uh, I, I, there was a lot that I didn't know and there, I knew what I didn't know, but I also thought I knew a lot and I, I thought I, I you know, could... <laughs> 
bring peace to the Mideast, like I can accomplish <laughs> anything. Um, and so I was probably a lot of people were like, eh, I don't know. So I, I, I could see how I had to change very early on. And I just feel like this is the difference. This is why that super skilled kid that you see in high school then disappears and doesn't get go to you know the, the, the juniors, doesn't make it anywhere. That's why the guy that you thought was going to be the first pick or third pick is drafted in the second and third round. So I feel coachability. You need the skill to be on the first line and the humbleness, the hum humility. humility to be on the fourth line, to play on the fourth line. That's what I say. Well, but no, that's really good. Is that from a fortune cookie or is that I, a Rebecca It's Rebecca Breakin the light? fortune cookie. No, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I feel that's the difference why like a guy who you think is going to be on the first line disappears and why the guy who maybe shouldn't even be on the team is on that fourth line. Yeah, they, I mean, applying it to business too, I don't, I don't know if this is exactly the same, but they say a lot of A students work for C students. Yeah, the saying is, I don't think Google originated it, but when Google said that, you know, you want to hire A students because if you hire as an A student a B student, then the B student hires the C student and the C student. So they always make yeah. sure that they, they, they hire, you know, A students. But it, the, the saying you're thinking of, I think, is more that entrepreneurs and, and founders of businesses tend to be B or C students who don't fit in. Don't get in. They like, don't school. That well. don't. Well, it's not that they don't school well. Like I was a pretty good student. I wasn't sitting there, foot on the table, telling the teacher like, Fair. you know, whatever. Uh, but but I was like, yeah, I probably don't need to read every page of that book, uh, and I'll open it. And that's why I would get a B. The only time I applied myself was when we had, in in college, we had a class where it was undergrads and masters and PhDs in one class. And I was an undergrad, and I was like, I'm gonna get the best grade, and I got the only A, I got an A minus. That was the only time in my life that I remember saying I want to actually att uh, attempt to do well. But but so the idea is that like the guy who doesn't get into the best schools and gets drafted or gets recruited by the Goldman Sachs, he probably will then go and start a business, and then he will recruit the A students, which in a way is what I did. To be fair. I went out and hired really smart people, people who knew a lot of things and were great and maybe didn't have that kind of like, oh, we can walk through this wall. And I was like, look, I'll figure out how to walk through that wall, but I need you guys to help me with a lot of other things. So, and I think that's why some of our success is because of that. All right, number one, persistence. I mean, anybody that knows me knows one of my favorite quotes is uh, President Coolidge's line about persistence. It's, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, there's a lot of smart bums. There's a lot of wealthy losers. I'm really paraphrasing this. <laughs> I think you know, there's like degenerates and all that. But he goes, the one skill that you need is persistence, tenacity, uh, perseverance. Uh, you know, you need to, and again, in sports, first of all, can you just imagine all the practice? Could you imagine all the politics? And there's a lot of politics. Mm. One of the things that really turned me off um, was like when I would be playing and I was like, hmm, I seem to be pretty good at the sport, but this kid is the son of that coach and this kid is getting all the love. And I could live with that, but I was like, yeah, I don't really want to put up with it for the rest of my life because then I could get injured. And, you know, and it's, it's also because in, in Canada, sports isn't like where the U.S. is. So I think in the U.S. it's just part of life and you deal with it. But so, but forget that. Just the hunger, the drive, the number of people that don't believe in you, the number of people, and then the injuries. You get injured, you gotta come back from injury, you know? Like think of the number of athletes who get injured and could literally just say, eh, I'm good, I got the money. I sometimes even have the awards, personal and team. I'm going to, um, or when you get benched. You know, like we lost, like in my amateur career, the teams I've been on, we've won probably 80, 85% of matches I'm on. I lost last night in an amateur game. It's going to piss me off for, at least the next time I get on the pitch, like I would, I, it's, and it's <laughs> amateur, you know. So I think like there's an there's an element of just being willing to realize that there's no overnight success. You're not going to step on a pitch and first play, woo everybody for them to roll out the carpet. So I think persistence in that is everything. But you got to hang on to that. Hang on to the persistence, the hunger. I uh, totally. You because always like, got to be hungry. It's got to be easy to once you lose too many games to just be like, all right. <laughs> Well, I yeah, I mean, you know, one thing I said in a company memo, uh, we've hired a lot of people, and I think a lot of stuff, military, business, sports, life, they're all entertainment, they're all very similar, because to succeed, like, I don't mean to be, like, brag about at all, like, I still think we're not successful, we could be more successful, but I feel like, regardless of what I would have done, I would have had success in one form or another, 
because I was just very persistent and I was a hard worker. So I feel like that could have applied to many things and there was a lot of lucky bounces. You know, like talking about sports, like I don't think I would have ever made it like into La Liga, just to be clear. But you know what? I probably, being a decent student, I could have parlayed my soccer skills to get a scholarship and go in the US and I'd be a VP at Citibank. Nothing wrong with that. But that's not what my heart is at, right? So I feel like you gotta be, you gotta stay to it. But the point I wanna make is in business, um, so, I don't think companies or sports organizations go from being champions to waking up one day and sucking. I think they accept losing over and over and over or like not finishing the play, recruiting poorly, making a bad play, tolerating bullshit in, in the culture. And they don't call it out and they don't say, I don't want this in my organization. So if you think of the Patriots who have dominated in the NFL for 20 years, regardless of whether you like them or not, they were a joke of an organization until Robert Kraft, massage parlor Robert Kraft, um, bought them. And then slowly but surely, and there was a lot of luck in them drafting Tom Brady. Like they say we, we, he was on our radar and we were gonna draft him, that bullshit. You drafted him in the sixth round, could have gone to 30 other teams, right? But I just well, feel not like- not only drafting him, but him actually getting the opportunity to well, that was luck because yeah, Drew Bledsoe got hit and he came in a game and he, he stuck to it. But all to say, I feel persistence is probably the number one thing in any field. All right. Yes, I think that's the thing. I think this list applies to literally anything, not just sports. Anyway, if you guys have a comment about this, be sure to leave it in the comments or another question for a future episode. Until then, see ya.